Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother and Dad, Love Ruth, John, Mark, and Pamela. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Parents, 1957, Part 104. 602 Huntmere Drive, Bay Village, Ohio, January 30th, 1957. Dear Mother, Tonight I am devoting entirely to writing to you, although by now it's 9.20 p.m. and I'm very tired. I know that you've been expecting a letter, but I hope you'll understand when there are times like this that I am thinking of you, but have been trying to find the time to write the long letter that I promised you on our trip to New Zealand and Australia. As a matter of fact, this is the first letter I've written this year, except, except for a note to John's mom to tell her the times John was on radio and television. This has been an extremely busy time for us, especially for John, the most strenuous period of our lives so far. I really don't know how he does it. I think there were 16 straight nights that he was out, meetings, speeches, and dinners. He's out every night this week. Last Saturday and Sunday, they moved John's office. Mark said, How will you get it down from that big building? John's been away for the two weekends previous to that. Youngstown, Ohio for the state meeting and to Dallas, Texas to the TOYM, the Outstanding Young Man of the Year meeting and dinner. John was nominated as one of the local Outstanding Young Men. He did not win this year, but didn't think it right he should when he's president. But I'm sure he will some year. Next year he'll be chairman of the event. He's also been appointed to one of the international commissions. I guess I mentioned being sick before Christmas. I was quite sick, thought I had pneumonia. We got over our colds after Christmas and had a couple of weeks of very cold weather, lots of snow, many schools closed, and the children and I had lots of snow to shovel, but they enjoyed being outdoors and were the only children out. Several hours a day, Pamela a half hour at a time. Then John got a cold before he went to Texas. He got over it there, but when we met the plane Sunday night, it, it was damp, and both the children had coughs all last week. I borrowed another steamer and spent several nights from one to the other with cough medicines, nose drops, aspirin, making steamer tents with sheets. The first cold that Marks got over without the doctor, I think, at least for a year or two, Pamela still has a cough, and I have a cold, but hope we'll get over them. Last week, John was on the radio every morning, twice Monday and Tuesday three times, television two, Wednesday and Thursday twice, Friday and Saturday morning. He got back from Dallas Sunday night and left at 6 o'clock a.m. to go by bus to the radio station, as I had to have the car that night. I got the babysitter, then picked up John at the office, and we drove to a party in Brattonall, where the head of the Foreign Affairs Council was a guest. John had to introduce him the next night at a banquet. Also, the president of Case, of Case University, the Techno Technology Institute, and his wife were there. Tuesday night after a day of this and the boss's banquet, he went back to the office and worked from 11 o'clock p.m. to 1 o'clock a.m. I phoned him and told him it was raining. He had to walk in freezing rain at 1 o'clock a.m. to the television station. They said he was very good. One fellow sent $53 from a group for the Olympic Fund because John inspired them so much. He was not asking for money. Then he had to walk to the parking lot down by the lake where the car where the car doors were frozen stuck, and arrived home at 2.30 a.m. carrying the huge floral bouquet from the speaker's table. I'd been rocking Pamela, who had a temperature of 102.8 and was so worried about John. But he came in smiling and doesn't seem to mind it all. 
Last night he gave a speech at a dinner. Tonight he's over in Shaker Heights at Mrs. Brooks McCracken, a wealthy lady, lady discussing the founding of a Bell Grieve camp. Bell Grieve, our welfare director, who just died of cancer. I think I sent you a picture I had taken with her last year. Wonderful person. She's asked that they carry on and not let the plans fall through. John's been in the newspaper so much. I was supposed to be on the radio too, but John got to go and he was always so good. Our picture has been in the Clevelander and on the cover of the Minnesota Journal. I'll try to pack up some of them and send them to you. Also, many papers. The president of the Hamilton JCs that wrote such a nice note was president of Hamilton, New Zealand. My error. This coming weekend, the new partnership is being celebrated with a party at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York. Kent Myers and Dick Stevens flew there. John brought me earrings from Neiman Marcus in Dallas. Kent and Dick flew there this morning to an insurance lawyer's convention. John was made a member. Outstanding lawyers. John may fly there Friday. The new offices are very large. Seven offices, library, big reception room. They have three and the library and hope to expand to the others in time. Dick won a $50,000 zoning case yesterday, so it all helps. We've sent out 5,000 announcements, $150 for stamps. That's why I've been so busy. I've addressed, stuffed, steel, sealed, and stamped 750 so far. It takes time. Tomorrow night, John speaks at another meeting. Last Thursday, he showed the slides of the JCs and got lots of compliments. The night he got back from Youngstown, we showed them at the Presbyterian Church. Funny how another church is more interested than your own. I couldn't get any more gold drapes that the squirrel chewed, so got green ones and Cloroxed, bleached them gold, and they're, they're a very close match. I'm proud of myself. John was so pleased. Also bleached the squirrel stains out of the desk. I'm going to attempt to refinish the table. The refinisher said he didn't think he could do a very good job. I've been trying to set up a polio shots center for Bay Village, but no luck so far. My, com my community service job, John's mother has been in a very bad way, bursitis in her right arm. So bad she couldn't do a thing with her right arm. Doran had to comb her hair and do the washing. She's had treatments of cortisone and is somewhat better, but I guess they're very painful shots too right to the central core. I hope your face is better. I guess it's all the cold weather. I'm very sorry to hear about the christening. Did Bud say why they didn't tell you? Same with their wedding. I guess we're all a little thoughtless of each other, but I can't understand that. It's hard not to be sensitive and feel hurt too, but I guess that's something we have to learn. I've been feeling quite miffed myself. I really spent a lot of time when our time was so precious and I looked everywhere in New Zealand and Australia for the wool shawl and the wool stoles and then in Hawaii for the wooden wear. We could have spent the whole day, that whole day on the beach in Hawaii, but I made John help me choose one. We went to a special shop. The fellow had even made one for Liberace and so many famous people had enjoyed those original wooden wear. I'm so glad you liked yours. John's mother and Joan said they liked them. Joan really did, and Dick too, but I've never had a note from anyone but you and Grandma Zook. I sent one to Mrs. Stevens and have none for myself, and I just thought they were beautiful. I guess another trip I'll just go swimming and let other people buy their own things. I'm so glad you and Daddy liked yours. I finally got the shawl for Brian here because I thought the Orlon would stay nice longer, plus our luggage was overweight with all the things we had. I've never heard from Doris or Bud. I saw an awful cute bunting I'd like to have sent, but thought they may, may have had one by then. If it's any consolation, Carol has hurt Mrs. Ray too. 
Last Christmas a year ago, they spent with Dave's folks, and John's mom had so counted on having Lisa there. Then Thanksgiving, they spent with his folks, and then and this Christmas, they just spent a short time while Santa came, then off to Dave's folks again. Ditto Christmas Day, only for a few minutes. I think you just have to forget those things, but it was a shame about the christening. I'd have blown my top. Oh yes, Mother Mother had bought the chris, christening dress, hoping all her grandchildren could be christened in it. I washed and ironed it and gave it to Carol, but she wouldn't use it, as they wanted Lisa to wear a short one, so the white satin slippers Dave's mother had given her would show. So you see, we all do it. I had a note from Ethel at Christmas that she wanted to come down while she was down east, and yesterday Chris wrote that Ethel had asked her to get time off so they could come down. So she said she and Ethel will be coming down Friday, February 22nd, and and leaving Monday. Ethel wants to hear firsthand about our trip, she says. Pat was in the hospital for two weeks with a bad back. Sounds like she needs a vacation, too. We've been invited to a party that weekend, so guess we'll have to beg off. There's something almost every night. Mark can tie his shoes, only four years old. Yes, Mark and Pam go to Sunday school, but I'm the teacher. Did Bud and I go when we were two and four? So many of the kids have colds that I feel that's where the kitties get sick. The last few weeks I've had so many little ones too, year and a half, crying, and one wet her pants on my lap. Mark is so clever it almost frightens me when he comes out with something. He knows the names of different breeds of dogs that even I don't know. Yesterday he asked John why you couldn't put electricity into a little box so that you could plug your razor into it in your car. Inventive mind, creating a battery. All his own idea. He's a truly wonderful little boy. It frightens me that I'm supposed to be raising him. Pamela is sweet, but just as trying as ever, never satisfied. Poor little Gail is still suffering from our trip. Today they were playing going to New Zealand. They packed their grips, kissed me goodbye, Pamela 14 times, and then Mark shut the gate upstairs and they were going up in the airplane. Pamela just screamed for me. She didn't want to leave her mommy even playing. Mark told her some mean old meanie was keeping the airplane in the air. When they returned, they bought me a candy violin and Mark traced on the map of Ohio where they went to New Zealand and Australia. He said Pamela had an awful time in New Zealand, hitting all the children and crying. He had quite an interesting trip. It's hard on the children never seeing John, but for the few minutes while he shaves. And it's tiring for me, especially when they're, uh, when they're sick. But he has the rugged part. He's a very unusual fellow. I don't know what I ever did to deserve a husband like him. I'm convinced, however, that all the talk I hear about the capitalist keeping the working man down is wrong. The capitalist works harder, that's all, and and the average fellow works his eight hours a day, sleeps, drinks, and watches television, while the enterprising man works day and night to get ahead and do things for other people. Not very many of them get it the easy way. Maybe the fellow that relaxes on the sofa every night lives longer, but the fellows fellows like John are really accomplishing things. Tonight it's a camp for underprivileged youths, heart patients, and paraplegics. Much love to you both. Take care of yourselves. Love, John, Ruth, Mark, and Pamela. It's now 11.20 p.m. Tomorrow night, a trip. P.S. Dear Mother, I knew there was a mix-up on the Christmas gifts, not the customs fault, but the children. They'd unwrap gifts so fast I had a hard time matching everything. We appreciated your things. I just assumed some of them came from Bud and Doris. The children loved, loved the record and Tinker Toys, and John needed the warm socks. At night, Mark asked John when John said he was going to move the office. How can you get it down out of that big building? 
He also wondered how Big John could get in the little radio. One day it was taped and John came downstairs while he was talking on the radio. Mark said, How did you get out of there? Pointing to the radio. Love, Ruth. 602 Huntmere Drive, Bay Village, Ohio. February 4th, 1957. Dear Mother, Every night I get out my diary and notepaper and say this has got to be it. I must reconstruct, reconstruct the trip. Oh, if only I'd sat down in New Zealand or Australia and written lengthy letters and send, instead of sending 200 Christmas cards. But everyone seems to appreciate my efforts, and many, many nights there were only three or four hours sleep, and I'm still paying for it. Thought I had Mark over his cold. Thursday night he coughed twice and in the morning had a bad earache. He threw up several times. We put him on Vesalin, even three aspirin and paragoric for the pain. Then it broke in the afternoon. About 30 pus marks on the sheet, so much drained out. Poor little guy just screamed with pain. Still treating him for it. Pamela still has her cough, mostly at night. I ironed seven shirts today to get caught up. Mark wouldn't let me leave his bedside, so I didn't get much done. The, Tul the Tulsa JCs were so inspired by John's talk in Dallas, they're planning to send their president to Tokyo next November. John's now in the Bay Village Assessment Board. A New Zealand war bride called today to invite us to dinner. She went around the world last year and is going to Jamaica for 10 days. We're going March 16th for dinner. First date, we were both free. We're having 10 people over Saturday to see John's slides. Much love. Good night. Love, John, Ruth, Mark, and Pamela. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history. If this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, photographs, family movies, and videos, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive, you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History, with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've made 600, excuse me, 659 history videos in seven areas. World history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. There's a donate feature. You might consider making a donation so that we can continue making these videos. You also might consider checking out our podcast, excuse me, at Anchor FM Peter Ray, R-E-A. If you live in Metro Manila, Philippines and are looking for a high school, you might consider Rest Celeste Educational Center. Rest Celeste is located in San Juan, Metro Manila, Philippines, in Barangay Maytunas, not far from the corner of P. Guevara and Wilson Street. At Rest Celeste, we specialize in, excuse me, helping young people who've had difficulty in the larger traditional high schools. It's more than a school. It's a warm, supportive community and a family-type atmosphere, and we try to be creative and innovative. And the, the website is, res, is restcelest.education, R-E-S-A-L-E-S-T. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.